Red Brick Media. Oh. High quality CDs, DVDs, lectures, khutbah, conferences, and Quran recitations. All revenue generated supports our Dawah work, supported by visiting our store. You can now purchase directly from our site www.redbrickmedia.co.uk In alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruh Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina Man yahdillahu fahuwa almuhtad wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu waliyan murshida Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إخوتي في الله اعلموا أن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر المحد وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إخوتي في الله بدرس أنسس الإسلام the title, as you heard, is In Time of Difficulties. And this is a situation we can all be in. Male and female, brothers and sisters, young and old, Muslim and non-Muslim. One point of our lives, for some reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about, we will be in a difficult situation. And the only way out is to return to your Creator, to take you out of that situation. One of the Salaf, Rahimahullah, قَالَ كَانَ لِي حِمَارًا أَكْتَرِيهِ He said, I had a donkey. And the purpose of this donkey was to rent it to the people. For the people to pay me to transport them from one point to another. And a man came to me. فَقَالَ يَا فُلَانِ He said, oh, so and so, أَتَصِلُنِي إِلَى كَذَا وَكَذَا Can you take me from this point to, the, to, the, to that point? فَقُلْتُ لَهُ نَعَمْ I said, I will take you. He said, I took what I was going with this man. The man said to me, إِنِّي لَأَعْلَمُ طَرِيقًا فِيهِ إِخْتِصَارٍ he said, I know a road that can take me where I want is a shortcut. Let us take this road. I said to the man, but I'm not familiar with that. He said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. I know the area very well. I can take you where I want to go and it's a shortcut and it's for you to come back earlier for your business, for your next trip. I listened to him. I trusted him. He looked decent. He's a normal man. He said, I walked and we walked and we walked and finally we came to a dead end. And the man, he drew his sword and he pointed at me. Get out of the way. I said to the man, you know, out of fear, I panicked. قال الحمار لك والدراهم لك دعني وشأني. He said, the donkey is yours and the wealth is yours. Let me go back to my family, to my children. قال لا حتى تفشي السر 
for you to expose me so I won't do this to anyone else? I won't let you go. I will kill you. I will take your donkey. I will take your money and I will kill you. I need to bury the secret right here. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ إِذَنْ إِنْ كَانَ مِنْكَ مَا تَقُولْ If this is what you want to do, فَدَعْنِي أُصَلِّ لِلَّهِ لِرَبِّ رَكَعَتِهِ Allow me to pray to Raka'ah. Allow me. He said, فَضَحِكَ النَّمَانِ You know, out of arrogance, he does not care. He laughed. You know, do you want to pray? Go ahead, فَتَعَجَّلْ You know, do it fast. He says, so I said, Allahu Akbar. وَكَأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ قَدْ مُحْيَ مِنْ قَلْبِي He said, because out of fear and concern and panic, it seems that the Qur'an was taken away from my heart. I'm standing. I want to pray. I want to read the Quran. I want to communicate to my Lord. This is a moment of truth. This is the time that I need to connect with my Lord. This is the time that I need His help. This is the time that I need to talk to Him. He said, but there is no Quran in my heart. I can't remember anything. And he says, subhanallah. And the man, he said, ta'ajjal ya rajul. He said, finish your prayer. Why are you standing there? قَالَ فَتَذَكَرْتْ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبَ الْمُضَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى I remember the word, the ayah from the Quran when Allah said, and who will respond to the stress to the person when he's in need of Allah and in state of stress, who else will respond? He said, فَوَاللَّهِ فَإِذَا بِفَارِسٍ he said, I finished the salah and all I said was this ayah. I had nothing else. I had no more, no more Quran. And when I finished my salah and I submitted myself and I was ready to die, a man, a man on his horse just approached us. He has a spear and he's waving. It. And the man who was supposed to be killing me, he has the sword. And he looked at him. قَالَ فَرَمَاهُ بِالْرُمْحِ فَوَاللَّهِ مَا أَعْطَاهُ He said, and he threw that sphere, and wallah, he did not miss his heart. He didn't miss. And I said, you know, out of happiness and joy, and the killer is on the ground, and this man is approaching me on his horse. And I said, مَنْ أَنْتَ رَحِمَكَ اللَّهِ Who are you? May Allah have mercy on you. فَقَالَ أَنَا الرَّسُولُ مَنْ يُجِيبَ الْمُضَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى he said, I am the messenger of your Lord. I am the messenger of the one that you call upon when in a state of stress. Allah has sent me was an angel appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save that person because the person was in a state of stress. We all, ya ikhwati fillah, all of us, we're going to be like this one day. One day, somehow, you know, it could be because someone accused you falsely. It could be because you are about to lose your loved ones. It could be because you, you were afflicted with illness and sickness. It could be because of anything. But have you ever reflect on this? Have you ever said to yourself, what could put me in that situation? What could be? يقول العلماء One of three reasons One of three reasons One تكون معرضا عن ذكر الله That you are completely oblivious Completely, you know, heedless about the remembers About Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're not there. You're so much, you're so busy with your daily life. You're so concerned about other people. Allah is no longer part of your life. And then your heart becomes cold. 
hard as a rock. And Allah يقول وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنُحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّي لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَ وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى يقول الله وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي for those individuals, for those people that i'rad turn away from Allah, from the deen of Allah, from the sharia of Islam, from akhirah, and they were concerned about money and its status and degrees on the wall, and vehicles and houses and you know, what, the, 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 the beauty of this life. That individual, that person will live life of a, 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 a depressed, depressed life. The, the Arabic word of dhanka, you know, oppressed or suppressed or anxiety. The word dhanka is difficult to pronounce in Arabic. Why? Because the life of that person would be so difficult. قال الله Not that he will be living such a life in this worldly life, but no. And then he said, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And we will resurrect that person on the day of يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ blind. And the person was saying, قال ربي Lima, oh my Lord, Lima Hashartani Ama. Why did you resurrect me blind? Wakat kuntu basira. I used to be able to see. I used to be able to see all these women walking in front of me. I used to be able to see when I'm cheating people. I used to be able to see when I'm doing haram. Why am I blind today? فَيَقُولُ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُ Thus, our ayat, our signs was presented to you. The brothers came to you and said to you, Fear Allah, you're going to die. اِتَّقِ اللَّهِ And do not oppress people. Remember that you will be judged on the day of يوم القيامة. And you responded as though you will live forever or there's no hereafter. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَ وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى And thus today you will be forgotten. Allah will not forget anyone. But the mercy of Allah will not reach that person. And because of that, the person, because of that, a person could be in a state of distress, stress, and depressed. The second reason, ya ikhwati fillah, and I know we do this all the time, is al amru bil ma'aruf wa nahyu an al munkar. An amru bil ma'aruf, a banning. Enjoying people that which is good and ordering people that to do that which is good and forbidding them to do haram. I know, I know. A lot of you will say, MashaAllah, my beard is this long, my soap is short, and my sujood alamat is sujood here, sima fi wujood, min athar is sujood. I'm doing well. But do you know that you're responsible of every Muslim around you? Do you know, ya ikhwati fillah, that when you leave your house for Salat al-Fajr, for Salat al-Asr, for Salat al-Maghrib, for Salat al-Isha, knowing your neighbor is not praying, that you did not do al-amr bil-ma'ruf wa nahya an al-munkar, that you saw an evil taking place, but you did not bother to say to that person, fear Allah, 
Do you know when you see a sister, your neighbor's daughter, uh, walking out of the house with no hijab, you did not care to say, Ittaqillah, fear Allah and cover your hair because this is part of Islam? You did not say that. I did not say this. We did not say it. We did not say it. You know? When you saw someone doing haram right in front of your eyes, we did not move. We did not care. We didn't. We lived our lives as though, you know, this is my life. And we said, this is UK. Hey, this is Birmingham. You know, you live your life every day. And, you know, alhamdulillah, your wife is wearing hijab. Your daughters, mashallah, taking care of them. They, they're learning Quran. Your son is going to the masjid. I don't care about him. And you forgot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. For what? Why? تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. For three things. Not because you look the best. Not because you're the strongest, wealthiest, brightest. You know, no. تأمرون بالمعروف. تأمرون بالمعروف. You tell people. Not only you, not, be, not your people, not because you're Pakistani, Indian, you know, Somali, Sudani. You say, you know, I'm going to take care of my people. No. We do this with everyone. Al-amru bil-ma'roof. wa nahya anil munkar When you do this, then Allah said, wa tu'minuna billah. See, the nations before us, they had iman. We have iman. The Christians have Iman, they had Iman, we have Iman. The Yahud had Iman, we have Iman. But they were not the best nations ever. Because they did not have Al Amr bil Ma'ruf wa Nahya an al Munkar. They didn't. You know, <laughs> subhanAllah. I saw this young man, you know, mashallah university, school, and alhamdulillah, you know, he's, he, he has his salah, which a lot of parents think that doing salah is a great thing and this is it. He does his salah, but he also does a lot of haram things. So I said to him, ittaqillah ya akhi. Now I know you do your salah, I see you during the Jum'ah, I see you, mashallah, you try your best. But other things that you're doing, you know, are not permissible. He says, Sheikh, you know, you shouldn't be bothered, you know, with me and by me. You should go and look at those Muslims who don't even pray. I, at least I pray. At least I do my wajib. You know, why are you on my case? There are tons of thousands of Muslims who don't care about salah. We yeah, have my classmates, they don't care about salah. So I said, Ya Akhi, I'm responsible of you and you're responsible of me. You know, what you do would affect me. What you do would affect me. And what I do would affect you. He said, how? I said, just imagine, think about it, reflect. Tomorrow when you finish your school, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to get a job. I said, MashaAllah. You know. And after that, he said, I'm going to get married. To whom? I said, you know, good sister. I said, you're going to marry our daughters? It could be my daughter. It could be his daughter. It could be your daughter. He says, it's true. And say, you know, don't you think that evil would affect me directly or indirectly? Don't you think tomorrow, you know, you, if you think this is your life and it's time for you to enjoy it, how nobody should come to you and correct you and nobody should say anything to you and you should live your life the way you want to live. That would not have impact on my life. If you think this would not have impact on our lives, you better think again. Because you will marry my daughter. 
or someone else's daughter. Oh, my daughter, if she's not a good Muslim, she would marry someone else, someone's son. And that is why the Ummah must work as Ummah. We must. And we should not say, you know, I do not care about it. And I know, Wallahi, I know for a fact, most of us, 90% of us, we don't do an Amra Bil Ma'roof and we don't care. We don't. You know, in the history of the people before us, it has been said that Allah sent one of the angels. And it's a story, don't say, I can, where can I find it in Bukhari and Muslim? It's not of that. It's just a story, little Ibra wal Ibra. It has been said that Allah sent an angel to destroy a village. And the angel who was doing the job said, Ya Allah, inna fiha abduka fulan ibn fulan. In that city is your servant such and such. Lam yu'siqa qat. He never disobeyed you. I know you heard this story many times. Never disobeyed you before. Qala fabda bih. He said, start with him. Start with that person. Why? It's start with that person because he never used to enjoy good and forbid evil. But ask yourself, or let me ask myself, how many times per day that we do al amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar? How many times that you walk into a complete stranger and you say to him, Sister, fear Allah, or brother, fear Allah, what are you doing is haram. Allah yaqul, Lu'ina, Lu'ina al-ladina kafaru min bani Israel ala lisani Dawood, wa ala lisani Is Dawood, wa Isa ibn Maryam, thalika bima asaw, wa kanu ya'tadu, kanu la yatanahun an munkarin fa'alu. Kanu la yatanahun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Allah has cursed the disbelievers from Bani Israel through the tongue of Dawood and Isa. Why? Because of the things that they used to do and they, they never ever used to do a nahi an munkar. Never. So when was, it, when was the last time you say to one person, do not do this. Ittaqillah. Fear Allah. I don't think any of you can recall this. I don't think the majority of the people even care about but we don't understand because of that because leaving that all these issues happen to the ummah the third point ikhwati fillah the third point which is different from the first point is for you working on your ibadah on yourself to be strong when the calamity falls, you need to do self-check. You, you need to examine yourself. You need to reflect. You need to ask yourself and say, you know, when was the last time that I prayed full qiyam al -lay? When was the last time that I Woke up my, woke my family up and say, let us pray Qiyam Alayhi, knowing that the Messenger of Allah said, Musnad Ahmad, Rahimallahu Rajula. May Allah have mercy on a man who got up in the middle of the night for Qiyam Alayhi. Fasallah. And then he prayed whatever he could pray. And then after that, Qala thumma ayqada ahlah. And then he tried to wake his wife up. When was the last time we did this, Ya Ikhwati Fillah? When was the last time? See, you know, most of us, and I was saying to some of the brothers nowadays, I said, Subhanallah, there was a time that when a person says to someone, Ittaqillah, Ittaqillah, the receiving in that person used to weep, used to cry, because their hearts were tender. There was a time when the ulama that, and the da'is and the people of the salaf, when someone comes to them and says, Ya akhi, ittaqillah, fear Allah, their eyes were not able to hold tears. 
But how many times someone said to us, Ittaqillah, or we heard the word Ittaqillah, and nothing was moved? How many times? You know why? Because everything is right here and nothing is here. Everything is nice, it's right here. Abu Usama comes and he talks to us. Ahsan, Sheikh Ahsan comes and he talks to us. Abdul Bari Yahya comes and he talks to us. You know, Kamal al comes and he talks to us. And we collect the information and I'm sure we took this deen for entertainment or information. Just collect a collection of information. We collect information and we do not implement. And every conference, we want to laugh. We want to enjoy ourselves. We want to have fun. We want to say, I really had a good time. That sheikh was funny. That sheikh was amazing. What did you learn? Well, I learned this, but how much of that would you implement? None of that. You know, subhanAllah. You know, how many times? And I was, I was watching this. I was watching this man with the green turban. And, you know, you know someone was giving him da'wah. You know, not giving a da'wah, but talking to him and say, fear Allah. And the guy was crying. And I say, subhanAllah. I mean, we may say, oh, he's not on the haq, he's not on the manhaj, he's all this. But his heart was tender. His heart was soft. And I'm not praising Bida or any of that. But I'm saying as, as the, the audience of the so-called Da'wah the Salafiyyah, we became people of information. Salat al-Taraweeh, how many people that you hear crying? How many people that you, you know, see them crying? How many people that you, you know, you know for a fact when he opens the Quran, you know, his tears, uh, you know, before he turns the page, you know, all the showering or raining on that page. We don't. Because there is no tazkiyah. Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah said, we came with two things. We were trying to do two things. A tazfiyah which is make sure that, you know, the deen, the aqidah is clear and pure. What tarbiyah? He said, we were, we were successful in terms of, of, of tasfiyah, but a tarbiyah we failed. In tarbiyah we failed. You know, it's sad. It's extremely sad to see, yeah, this is the hope of the ummah. And we all have information, but nothing that sings down to the heart. So we need to do this self-reflection. At the time of calamity, the time of hardship, what should we do, ya ikhwati fillah? What should we do? First, we should flee to Allah. We should run to Allah. Because no matter what we do, no one can help you but Allah. No one can protect you but Allah. Nobody can assist you but Allah. Allah. Rush to Allah. You know, flee to your Lord. At the time of, 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 of fitna, at the time of shidda, at the time of calamity, the first one that you turn to should not be calling the police, should not be calling the doctor, should not be calling your mother or your father, should not be, you know, asking someone or people to help you. The first one that you should go to is Allah. The, four, the first one that you should dial, his number is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else. No one else. But it seems that Allah is the last one that we go to. He's the last one. You know, how many, I know a lot of you are, you know, immigrants. You came here seeking for better life. And I guarantee you, when you were applying for asylum or for immigration paper, where you were filing this, I guarantee you we all went to lawyers. We all went to people who can help us. We all went and asked for assistance of those people. And then we say, Ya Allah, help me. We didn't go to Allah first. 
We didn't go to Allah and say, Ya Allah, you first and last. You're the one who has this. Make it easy for me. Wallahi, if three of us is standing next to each other and you come to us and then you ask the first person to help you and he doesn't or he didn't and then you did the same thing with the second person, I as a third person, I will feel insignificant and I will say after they reject you both, you're coming to me? This is a human nature. And we put Allah on last resort. When all the gates are closed, where there is no other way, we go back to Allah. We go back to Allah. The messenger of Allah, come up his sahih, he comes and he saw a lady, old lady, crying. Because she lost her loved ones. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أمة الله اصبري واحتسب or the servant of Allah اصبر have صبر and ask Allah to aid you and help you قالت and she didn't know that the message the person was talking to her is the messenger of Allah قالت إليك عني فإنك لم تصب مصيبتي she said, out of my way, leave me alone. You were not afflicted with what I'm afflicted with. I don't want you, leave me alone. So the messenger of Allah, he proceeded, he, he continued with his, talk, with his walk. And the man who was after the messenger of Allah, Do you know who you were talking to? He said, that was the messenger of Allah. That was the messenger of Allah. So she got up, she forgot her pain, she forgot her issue, she ran after the messenger of Allah, she said, oh messenger of Allah, I'm sorry, I did not know you. Now I'll be patient and ask Allah to reward me. He said, no, sabr is from the first time, from the get-go. The first time something to you, happens to you, this is the time you should run back to Allah. Not after you try everything else and Allah is the lot. No. First, how many times have, how many of you have children when your child gets sick? And instead of reading the Fatah on that child, instead of reciting the Ad'iyah for that child, what do we do? We call the doctors. We call the nurses. We ask them, what should we do? The temperature is high. He has a fever. He's coughing. He has a runny nose. He has you know, pink eyes or red eyes. We go to them. But the first, when the calamity hits, we should say, Ya Allah. Fafirru ilallah. That's the thing. The second thing, Ya Ikhwati Fillah. Al Yaqeen at the time of doubt. Al-Yaqeen, when there is doubts and in confusion and the fog is so thick at the time of that situation, we should say, I, let me check my, my sincerity. Let me check the situation. And then reflect on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go back to the sharia of Allah. Now, I re listen to this, to the beautiful story of the sahaba of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is yours to imagine. It's yours to envision. It is yours just to see if you can travel through time and through history and see if you can see the condition of the messenger of Allah at that moment. The Sahaba start having doubt in one of the issues. And this is after the battle of Hunayn. After the battle of Hunayn. The messenger of Allah comes and he takes 10,000 from the Ansar and the Muhajireen and 2,000 from the new Muslim of the city of Mecca after he conquered the city of Mecca. And he said, let us go, we're going to go to Taif. But Auf bin Malik from Taif, he prepared the army to face the messenger of Allah. So the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, they looked at the number of the Muslimin and the Mu'minin and they said, لَنْ نُغْلِبَ الْيَوْمَ مِنْ قِلَّةِ Today, 
We will not be defeated because of our number. We were only a bit over 300 people. And we defeated Quraysh in the battle of Badr. We conquered the city of Mecca. Today we have 12,000 soldiers. We will never be defeated today. But Auf bin Malik had a different plan for the Sahaba. Auf bin Malik, he ambushed them all. And he put his army on the, at the top of the mountain. And one of the Sahaba and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were coming through this narrow path. They had the sky start raining rocks and arrows. And the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they, they run. They left the messenger of Allah by himself. Except few. And the Sahaba and Abu Sufyan, who was brand new Muslim, was just accepted Islam. He said, Wallahi, then yaqifum illa illa bahar al ahmar. He said, These people will not stop until they reach the Red Sea because they were running from the battlefield so fast. And one of the uh, Jubayr bin Junaid, he said, Batala sihr Muhammad al yawm. Muhammad's magic is not working today. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his mule. He wants to go for full force towards the enemy. And Abu Sufyan and Abdullah and Al Abbas bin Abdul Muttab, they're holding back the, the mule. And the Messenger of Allah say, Ana Nabi, Ana Nabi Allahi wala kadib, Ana Muhammad ibn Abdul Muttalib. Subhanallah. And then the Messenger of Allah, Qala ya Abbas, Ud'ahl Samura. Call the people of Samura. The people of under the tree. فَقَالَ عَبَّاسَ الْعَبَّاسَ And he was he very, had a very strong, loud, deep voice. قَالَ يَا أَصْحَابُ السَّمْرَةِ And the Sahab of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they just made a U-turn. And they came full force. And when the Messenger of Allah saw the, the sign, قَالَ الْآنَ حَمِيَ الْوَطِيسِ To make long story short, they, the, the people of Hunayn, people of Taif were defeated. And he captured 6,000 of their children and women, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 14,000 camels, 40,000, you know, and so on. And the messenger of Allah and the Sahaba, they thought everybody's going to be rich. The Ansar, they thought everybody's going to be rich. But the messenger of Allah surprised them with something else. He gave Abu Sufyan 100 camels. He just accepted Islam. He gave Al-Hakim bin Hizam another hand in camels. Abu Sufyan says, I want more for my sons. Another hand in camels. Another hand in camels. Then the Ansar said, Ghafar Allahu li Rasulillah laqiya qawma. May Allah have mercy on the messenger of Allah. He found his people and he forgot about us. Sa'ad bin Ubadah comes to the messenger of Allah. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ هَذَا الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ وَجَدُ عَلَيْكَ O messenger of Allah, this group of the Ansar, they have something. Something. It's a difficult situation. They want wealth. They want this, you know, غَنَائِم. They cannot get anything because the messenger of Allah, he gave them all to the Quraysh and to the new Muslims. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم to سعد وأين أنت من ذاك يا سعد he said where are you what is your position فقال يا رسول الله إنما أنا رجل من قومي I say what my people say قال فجمعني قومك he said gather your people for me so he gathered the Ansar and the messenger of Allah came to the Ansar فقال يا معشر الأنصار مَقَالَةٌ بَلَغَتْنِي عَنْكُمْ وَوَجْدَ وَجَدْتُمُوهَا عَلَيْهِ He said, oh, ma'ashir al-ansar, all oh, the people of the ansar, I heard you said something of what I did, and you have something in your heart concerning what I did. يَا ma'ashir al-ansar, أَلَمْ آتِيكُمْ ضُلَّانًا فَهَدَاكُمُ اللَّهُ بِي أَلَمْ آتِيكُمْ كُفَّارًا فَهَدَاكُمُ اللَّهُ بِي أَلَمْ آتِيكُمْ أَعْدَانًا فَأَلَّفَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ 
They said, did I not come to you when you were enemy to one another? Allah united you because of me? Were you not disbelievers and Allah guided you to Islam through me? Were you not poor and Allah gave you because of me? And the Ansar did not have anything else to say except Lillahi al minnatu wal fadl Lillahi al minnatu wal fadl And the Messenger of Allah at the time of shubha at the time of you know then he reminded me of, the, of them of this and i know you know the rest of this story what i will say to you from this yeah, that at the time of difficulties run to allah at the time of difficulties put aside all the doubts and the issues that are running through your head and go back to allah أنا الله أعلى وأعلم سبحانك سبحان رب العزة عما يصفون سلاما على المرسل والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم